Good morning. Good morning. If you would please take your seats. And I welcome you to our 116th celebration of our Founders Day. We'll begin with the posting of the colors by the Albany State University ROTC Command. You may post the colors. We come at this time to give you thanks. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this special, momentous occasion. Father God, we honor and praise you for the life and the existence of Albany State University, for the 116 years of service, <laughs> sacrifice, and significant stewardship for this institution's distinctive purpose. We thank you. We thank you for your goodness, and we thank you for your grace. Continue to bless us now at this hour as we come to celebrate the love, the life, and the legacy of the founder of this distinguished university, Dr. Joseph W. Hawley. So as we come to give tribute to our founder, we give you thanks for this place of sacred trust. Thank you for this place, these sacred grounds of service to humanity. Grant unto us, grant unto this institution your grace to move progressively forward. Grant unto us your vision to accomplish our best hopes for this institution. Grant, give unto us your wisdom to be good stewards of that which you have blessed us with and provided by this institution of higher learning. Grant unto us the courage to stand for the truth and to do what, is, what we know is morally right and just for Albany State University. May your everlasting blessings and favor be upon the Holly family, the students, the administrative leadership, the faculty and staff, alumni and friends of our beloved Albany State University. Thank you for your faithfulness, for great is thy faithfulness. Thank you for your sustaining power. We thank you and we ask you for your excellence in all that we do. We ask these things in the glorious, precious, mighty, and excellent name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen, 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 amen. and amen. amen. Every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring, ring with the harmony of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise high as the listening skies, let it resound loud as the rolling sea. Sing a song full of the Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us, facing the rising sun. Of a new day begun, let us march on, let us march on, to victory is won. Oh. 
God where we met thee. Bless the hearts drunk with the wine of the world we forget thee. Shadow beneath thy hand, may we forever stand true to our God, true to our native land. Amen. Excuse me. Thank you, Dr. Hood. That was Dr. Marsha Hood, the chair of our visual and performing arts department conducting the ASU Chamber Singers. Once again, a round of applause. <laughs> Next, we will have our occasion and welcome brought to us by Mr. Joshua Era, Mr. Albany State University, and Ms. Janice Bibbs, Miss Albany State University. Endeavors of the boy are the embracements of the man. Greetings, I am Joshua James Era, a 21-year-old management information system major hailing from Miami, Florida by way of Clayton County, Georgia, and she has passion in her heart, purpose in her eyes, and power within her. She is a queen. Good morning, I am Janice Nikki Bibbs, <laughs> a 22-year-old senior hailing from the windy city of Chicago, Illinois, and it is with dignity and grace that we are elated to serve as Mr. and, and Miss Albany, Albany State University. University. Good morning, student body of Albany State University, faculty, staff, alumni, and family members of those who have paved the way for this historic institution. 116 years ago, a man by the name of Dr. Joseph Winthrop Polly founded this institution, a powerful and strong institution that has brought us all together today. And why are we here today? To celebrate, of course. And what are we celebrating? This grand occasion. What grand occasion, you may ask? Well, Westbridge Dictionary defines occasion by way of something special. Today, due to a very special man, who thought it not robbery to place this special institution in Albany, Georgia, for special people like you and me, we have an occasion. And this institution is indeed a very good and impressive institution. It has been standing for 116 years. That's good and impressive. This institution overcame four floods. That's very good and impressive. And the list goes on and on, but that's why we are here to celebrate this impressive institution, this very good looking institution founded by a very good looking man who impressed those who doubted him. That same man founded an institution that impressed each and every one of us so much that we decided to be a Golden Ram. Work for the Golden Rams, give back to the Golden Rams, or even influence you to drive into Ram County today. So on the behalf of the faculty, administration, and student body, we welcome you to the 116th Founders Day Convocation. Let's celebrate and thank you all for coming. Thank you, Mr. and Miss Albany State University. Now we'll have greetings by Ms. Josephine Holly Jefferson, the daughter of our illustrious founder, Dr. Joseph W. Holly. Please greet her as she comes. Good morning, Albany State University, President Frederick, faculty and students, friends and families. I am pleased to be here with you again to celebrate another Founders Day. I greet you today as a proud and fortunate woman, proud to be the daughter of a man who had vision and courage and perseverance 
and proud of my heritage and connection to Albany State. My father would also be proud to see how his vision has evolved. I am fortunate to be able to be with you to celebrate another Founders Day and to witness once again the forward progress of the university. And I'm very excited about the dedication of the new building in my father's honor. Every year when I return here, I wonder, what changes will I see this year? Each year, I look around and take great pleasure in discovering something new that shows Albany State is still moving forward. I wish my father were here to see what good energy, good planning, and faith have wrought. He would be amazed, as I am always amazed, and he would be so proud that his early efforts have borne fruit. His goal from the start was excellence in education. I am grateful that his values of perseverance, excellence, and achievement are more and more evident in this place today. Every day I feel that ASU is moving my father's dream well beyond his vision to a new level. There is a feeling of purpose, professionalism, and of mutual dedication looking forwards to the future. I commend you students, all of you that I have met are so pleasant, so vibrant, that my faith in the future is renewed. Your energy gives me hope that my father's dream will endure. Remember, what you as students achieve in the present is key to what the future will hold for you. If my father were here today, he would encourage each of you to persevere, to strive for excellence, and to achieve the best education you can. He was steadfast in his belief that education was the answer for a happy and successful life. My father had a great vision and a big dream, and he would encourage you to dream big as well. Faith, perseverance, and vision, combined with the kind of education you are offered here at ASU, will make all your dreams possible. The beauty and size of this wonderful campus and its extensive academic offerings are far beyond what even my father would have imagined and attest to the value of having a vision and working to make that vision a reality. As you move forward as students and as individuals looking forward to an, to an ever-changing future, my father's charge to you and mine as well would be to hold fast to your dreams, keep your minds and hearts set on a hopeful vision for the future, and steadfastly persevere working toward, towards its fulfillment. Today, we celebrate a legacy of which we are all a part, a legacy of vision, hope, determination, and courage. Today, I challenge you then to continue to, uh, to honor and find inspiration from that legacy, to embrace the gifts of the present and prepare with hope for the tasks that lie ahead of us in the future. Never stop growing. Thank you. Okay, can we get back over here? Thank you, Mrs. Holly Jefferson. We'll now have another selection by the ASU Chamber Singers under the conduction of Dr. Hood. And then following that, we'll have the introduction of our speaker by our student body president, Ms. Diamond Perry. Dr. Hood. Oh, my Lord, I made my vow. 
Good morning. I am Diamond Unique Perry, a 22-year-old mass communication major from the historic city of Petersburg, Virginia, and I currently serve as the Student Government Association President. And today I have the honor of introducing the legendary Dr. C. W. Grant. <laughs> Dr. C. W. Grant is a graduate of Florida A&M University, Tallahassee, Florida, where he earned his Juris Doctorate degree. He is now retired after serving 30 years as the Vice President for Student Affairs at Albany State College University. Dr. Grant, a renowned speaker, lecturer, and consultant, has traveled extensively and has impressed audiences all over the country. He has conducted many workshops on student affairs and law, Several articles have been written by Dr. Grant, of which appear in professional journals. Throughout his career, he has left an indelible impression on the minds of thousands of students with his legendary phrase, if it is to be, it is up to me. <laughs> his memberships included the National Association of Student Affairs Professionals, NASAP, and the American Association of Law Librarians. He is now a longtime supporter of the Boys Club of Albany and was named Layman of the Year 1985 by the Boys Club of the State of Georgia. He is a past president of the Board of Directors, Albany Civil Rights Museum at Old Mount Zion Baptist Church, member of the Board of Directors, American Red Cross, and past chairman of the Doherty County School Board. Dr. Grant, a life member of Alpha Cap, excuse me, Kappa Alpha Psi, Let me start over, let me start over. <laughs> Dr. Grant, a life member of Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated, holds the distinction of being one of six Kappas in the almost 100 year history of Kappa Alpha Psi to have received both the Elder Watson Diggs Award and the Laurel Wreath Award, the two highest awards that Kappa Alpha Psi gives. Dr. Grant is an active member of the Second Mount Zion Baptist Church of Albany, Georgia, and he has shared countless happy years of the marriage with the late Dr. Velma Fudge Grant. I now give you the legendary Dr. C. W. Grant. Thank you very much. Mr. You're Grant. welcome. Thank you, dear. You want to get a photo of the two of uh, Okay. We have got to have the goods, Rams, if ASU is to finish strong. A bluff may last a little while, but not for very long. A line of talk all by itself will seldom see us through. We have got to have the goods, Rams, and nothing else will do. The fight is pretty stiff, Rams. I'd rather call it tough. And all along the route are wrecks of those who tried to bluff. They could not back their line of talk to meet the final test. We have got to have the goods, Rams, and that's no idle jest. Good morning. Good morning. You know, I would be remiss. I would be extremely remiss. In fact, I would be remiss beyond a point for which I could be forgiven if it, I did not say to this lovely young lady how much I appreciate that very warm, that very glowing, that very accurate, and that very deserving introduction. <laughs> now, Rams, that's called positive thinking. And if you do not feel good about yourself, it isn't likely that anyone's going to feel good about you. I feel exceedingly good about myself, so I can say thank you for that deserving introduction. Not only that, Rams, I know why I was invited here this morning. And I want the students in this audience to hear me and hear me well. I was not invited here this morning because 
I'm a retired vice president for student affairs at the university. It is significant. But that's not why I was invited here this morning. And I want you to hear me and hear me well. I was invited here this morning because I'm good. And that's what you're going to have to be. And I want you students to know that I did not wake up one morning good. And you will not wake up one morning good. You have to work at being good. You have to put every power of your being at being good. And I don't apologize for being good. <laughs> Rams and ladies and gentlemen, on many occasions in my life, I have been accused by some of my friends and others as being loquacious. And I'm not about to suggest to you this morning that there is absolutely no validity in their accusation. <laughs> I, I am going to say to you that I have no words at my command that could truly express to Albany State University my appreciation for having been afforded this opportunity this morning and defying an ancient canon of invited speakers, I began with an apology. For I do not know whether I have a right to speak to you this morning. I have felt that to earn such a right, I should be able to say to you, if I find the right page, <laughs> <laughs> I should be able to say to you that your beliefs are wholly mine. And in the darkness of the universe in which we live, I can see with clearness and certainty a consoling shaft of light. Unable to say this, I have wondered whether my message could be of worth to you this morning. Wondered whether with good cause you might not even resent it as an impertinence. I, at the very least, whether fitness and good taste might not exact another spokesman for the lesson of the hour. However, I have been assured that a message would be welcome from anyone who has been able, however black the depths of Nessians, to hold fast to certain values. I have been assured that what such a one would say would be listened to without resentment and even indeed with gladness of those born of greater faith. Gladness born with the perception that what is noble and high and sacred reveals itself in many forms and is unmoved by the faltering sons of men. Over 200 years ago, Rams, Huxley published to the world a memorable volume which is known by the title Lay Sermons and Addresses. A lay sermon by one whose beliefs are not far removed from Huxley's is what you're going to hear from me this morning. And to hold fast with, to what has been said to me, to shelter myself squarely behind what has been told to me, I'm going to talk to you this morning, Rams, about I hope. Because you need to know that I hope is not enough. Let me ask you, Rams, what do you hope? Do you hope that you have a good life? Do you hope to have a good life is not enough? Do you hope that ASU will be around for another 116 years, or do you know that I hope that ASU will be around is not enough? Do you, do you hope? that the reputation that this university has do you, is the key to its future, or do you know that I hope is not enough? I must agree with you that a theme is here not for a brief fragment of an hour, but for a lecture, a series of lectures, a volume, almost one might say a library. Nonetheless, I have come here this morning to say to you, Rams, categorically that I hope is not enough. Let me ask you, Rams, what is hope? Webster says it's a desire accompanied by expectations of a belief in a fulfillment. Bar says that hope is a misty morning 
that does not signify a cloudy day. Yet another has said, hope is a pathological belief in the occurrence of the impossible. Now, Rams, if you have come here this morning with I hope that ASU make it on your tongues, which we now know is the belief in the occurrence of the impossible. If you have done this and you are not prepared to do anything else, then we have already failed. Indeed, ASU need for you to regroup if you do not know that I hope is not enough. Oh yes, ASU wants you to hope and pray as long as you know that God help those who help themselves. And Rams, I don't know whether you know it or not, but we are in a tough fight trying to survive financially, emotionally, and spiritually. And we have not been promised a rose garden. Now, mind you, I'm not talking about what you would like ASU to be. I'm talking about what it is, no rose garden. But the truth of the matter is, ASU's future will not be a rose garden because life is not a rose garden. Now, the logical question, of course, for you to ask me is, Dean Grant, if you would dare come here on this celebration of Founders Day and tell us I hope is not enough for ASU's future, why don't you tell us what is enough? Well, Rams, I wish I could tell you categorically what enough was, but I can tell you what I think enough is. I think perseverance, patience, positive thinking, and money. I think those are enough. Amen. I know that I hope Say it again. is not enough. <laughs> perseverance. As you know, through perseverance, the snail reached the ark. It is the holding to a course of action, belief, or purpose without giving way. He could have stopped, but he would not have reached the ark. Samuel Johnson says, great works are performed not by strength, but perseverance. It means then that each of us must convey to others a sense of endurance in the pursuit of ASU's future. Ram's perseverance requires dogged resolve in dealing with others. If you have it, it means that you can withstand difficulties. And we are going to have some difficulties here in effectuating change. If we have it, it implies that you can resist the temptation to do nothing. And you're going to be tempted to do nothing, and if you have it, it implies that notwithstanding what is said about ASU, we will do good anyway. People are unreasonable, illogical, and self-centered. Love them anyway. Rams, if we do good, people will accuse us of selfish ulterior motives. Do good anyway. If you are successful, you will win true friends and false friends and true enemies. Succeed anyway. Rams, the good you do today will be forgotten tomorrow. Do good anyway. Rams, honesty and frankness will make you vulnerable. Be honest and frank anyway. People favor underdogs, but follow only top dogs. Fight for some underdogs anyway. What you spend years building may be destroyed overnight. Build anyway. Rams people really need your help, but may attack you if you help them. Help people anyway. Rams give the world the best you got and you'll get your teeth kicked in. Mm. Give the world the best that you got anyway. Patience, the capacity of calm endurance. You've often heard of the patience of Job, waiting until his change came. Matthews 18, 29 says, 
have patience with thee, and I will pay thee all. The wisest of all men, Solomon wrote in Proverbs 25, 15, with patience a ruler may be persuaded. It also denotes the tolerance of something or someone in the pursuit of your desired goal. Emotions. Excuse me, got to find the right page again. <laughs> Denotes patient over uh, somebody over a period of time, generally without complaint, though not necessarily without annoyance. So then it, it means then you may be annoyed with ASU for not getting it the way you want it, but you must not lose patience with ASU. You must not lose patience with ASU. In short, don't expect all of the answers tomorrow, but do not ever stop seeking them. Positive thinking. It could be that you have been deluded by the thoughts of incompetence. It may be that you have been told so often that you cannot do certain things. You have come to believe that you can't. Remember that success or failure is merely a state of mind. Believe you cannot do a thing and you can't. Know that you can and you will, and you must see yourself doing it, and you must, must see yourselves doing it. If you think you're beaten, you are. If you think you dare not, you don't. If you think you can win, if you would like to win but think you can't, it's almost a sense that you won't. If you think you'll lose, you've lost. For out in the world you find success begins in a fellow's will. It's all in the state of mind. For many a race is lost before even a race is run. And many cowards fail before even his work's begun. Think big and your deeds will grow. Think small and you'll fall behind. Think that you can and you will. It's all in the state of mind. If you think you are outclassed, you are, you got to think how to rise, and you got to be sure of yourself before you can ever win a prize. Life battle doesn't always go to the strongest or fastest man, but sooner or later, the man who wins is the man who thinks that he can. And I submit to you, Rams, this morning, I don't know what it is that I can't do. Now, that might be something that I can't do. It's just that I don't know what it is. I know you're going to ask me, can I fly a Piper Cub? And I'm going to tell you no, but I can learn. And that's what you're going to have to instill in your mind, Rams. Whatever it is, we can do it. And I'm urging you this morning, Rams, not to rest on your laurels. Do not forget what ASU gave you, graduation from one of the world's greatest institutions. And, <laughs> and in order to assure that ASU receive its deserved and equitable shares of the wares in this competitive marketplace of the world, we must succeed. If we do not, we will suffer from shame or anger or both. This is not simply a job for the talented 10, but all of us, do you hear me? All of us, Ram, tribe men and tribal leaders of like, must live the words of Louis Untermeyer from compromise and things half done Keep me with stern and stubborn pride. And when at last the fight is won, God keep me still unsatisfied. I want each of you to work towards the end that ASU will always be ASU. Don't let somebody tell you that some university across this nation is better than ASU be because if you permit someone to convince you of that, 
you will have permitted someone to convince you that some university somewhere else is better than ASU. Prayer. We came from God. Whether or not you believe in a divine intelligence in the oxidot in the oxidot manner, I just feel that someone is out there somewhere. You must be aware that this universe is a planned composite of order and beauty. Man must have come from an intelligent being because we believe this, we can make sense out of our lives. We need a point of reference that is absolute and perfect since we are finite and imperfect. We need someone to worship who is just and honest, forgiving and merciful. We find this in God. We believe we came from him with some of the attributes with which he possessed. This enables us to forgive and to be honest and to seek justice and mercy for our fellow man. Now, Rams, one must pay tribute to some supreme being through prayer. However, I really want to make it clear to you that your God does not have to be my God. But I do think that each person should have a supreme being with whom he or she communicates in times of distress as well as in times of harmony. And Rams, these are distressful times. Now, since I believe in Christianity, I just happen to communicate with my God through prayer. Now, when I say communicate with God, I'm not referring to the sacrilegious act of going to church on Sunday morning, which is expected of us, I'm talking about serious, honest, and private communication between you and your supreme being that will help you get, get this direction of this age of super growth and change. In our realms, one of the things that each one of us must understand that the only thing that does not change is change. Everything else must change. So ASU is changing, and we must understand that. Now, indeed, some of you may be tuning me out now because you have been led to believe that there is no supreme being. You have, been, you have become worshipers of science and technology and you believe in the power of the computer and that smartphone that you have. <laughs> but one day I tell you, you're going to feed a complicated problem into your well-programmed computer. And it's, you are going to be astonished when the printout reads, it does not compute. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps. Perhaps you will realize then that science is not infallible and that you need something or someone else, a supreme being, if you please, to whom you can pray for strength to exhibit concerns for ASU, for others, and to understand that I hope is not enough. And I submit to you, Rams, just as you have enough faith to leave your hamburger cooking to McDonald's and your chicken frying to churches and your bus driving to Drayhound, have enough faith to leave some things to God. <clears throat> we belong to God. His life flows through us and around us. And we can see it in each individual we meet. All life is precious and of great worth. This affects our judgment and every decision with which we are placed. It can make bring purpose out of chaos. It can assure us that we are not alone. Now, Rams, after you shall have developed a relationship with God, don't you dare go to God telling God about how big and bad your problems are. Go to your problems 
and tell them how big and bad your God is. <laughs> then you, not R. Kelly, can say, you saved me. <laughs> now, Rams, now, Rams, I have, I have reached four scores and eight. And I want you to know, and I want you to know that in my lifetime, I've had to do a lot of praying. And I have been blessed. Look at me. Even time has been kind to me. I look good, and I don't make any apologies for it. But I need to tell you, Rams, what I need you to understand this morning, that you can't take one of those gold credit cards you got and go out to the mall and pick up any blessings. You have to do something every day for God to look down and say, that deserves a blessing. Now, hear me well, Rams. Instead of whispering that the president does not have a terminal degree, just pray for the president's success. <laughs> because if the president succeeds, then ASU survives. Money. ASU cannot survive without financial support. So don't, not a single one of you leave out of here today. We're not making some kind of financial commitment to support ASU. They're going to be pa passing out pledge cards. Pledge $19.03 a month. And in a year, if 500 of us do this, in a year, we could raise $114,000 and the university needed. But pledge more than that if you can. And some of you ought to be able to pledge more than that. And I know that you can, because I know that I can, which is what I'm doing. But I, I want us to invest in ASU financially. The university cannot survive without your financial support. And when someone is pleasant, passing out those pledge cards, take one. And don't leave this campus without making some kind of financial commitment to ASU's future. The, the university system of Georgia does not provide enough funding for any unit in the university system to survive. We must, we must financially support this institution. And if you don't support us financially, do not say expedient and expedient. I want to say a curse word. <laughs> <laughs> do not say an expletive deleted thing about this university if you are not paying any money. Now, Rams, I would like to ask you three simple little questions. Three simple little questions. If not now, when? If not here, where? If not you, who? There is only one answer that you can give to those three simple little questions. If not now, when? If not here, where? If not you, who? One answer. If it is to be, it's up to me. And that's what you must decide right now. That if ASU is going to survive, you must decide right now that it's up to me. I have long since decided that if the world is going to be a better world, it's up to me. And I intend to maintain that resolve until I hear that I will call my name. If it is to be, it's up to me. Peace, and may the maker of the force be with you. Thank you.
Thank you. <clears throat> there is no way you can hear Dean Grant. So y'all, before I start, I gotta try just a little bit, just one time. I am awesome, and they make no excuses about it. <laughs> right? There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. Do you like that? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I had to try that. I, it does feel good. <laughs> Dean Grant, thank you so much. Um, I get the opportunity to talk to Dean Grant on multiple occasions, and um, he shared with me one time on that same comment, he mentioned that he was going to meet some people in the alleyway and tell them what he thought, and I thought, this man is serious. It is serious <laughs> business. Um, be careful what you say, because he will do something about it. So thank you, Dean Grant. I, I really appreciate you. Happy Founders Day, everyone. Thank you all for being here today. And today we celebrate 116 years of academic excellence and the rich heritage and tradition of Albany State University. I am so thankful to see so many of our community leaders, our alumni, faculty, staff, and students, and all of our supporters. This university cannot make it without all of you being at the table. And thank you to the members of the Holly family, especially Mrs. Josephine Holly Jefferson for joining us today. And for those of you who do not know, a lot of the Holly family members are sitting across the front this morning. Can you please stand? Thank you. Please get to know them and say hello this morning if you have the opportunity to do so. And thank you all for being here. I'm gonna take a quick point of privilege. I went to elementary school in Philadelphia, and I realized earlier today that Mrs. Holly Jefferson was a teacher during that time frame at Prince Arnold Elementary School in Philadelphia. She's probably one of those teachers that put me out of the classroom, but <laughs> it's okay. But thank you and welcome, and welcome for- So you weren't allowed you. to push you out. <laughs> So we are connected in so many different ways. Dr. Joseph, Holly, Joseph Winthrop Holly aimed to improve the lives and the citizens of this area when he opened Albany State University, then Albany Bible Emanuel College. Not only would this institution afford higher education opportunities for many students, it would serve as a catalyst for economic growth by impacting the entire region. And even today, this school still impacts the entire region. This year's theme, Honoring the Legacy encourages all of us to pause and reflect on Dr. Holly's mission. As ASU continues to prepare leaders and scholars who we know will one day this, to leave this institution and take those learned values and life-changing experiences to their own communities and to communities around the world. Since last Founders Day, our students, faculty, and staff have achieved great things. ASU is ranked nationally as one of the top 10 producers for education and mathematics bachelors for African-American students by diverse issues in higher education. We're also ranked number six, the number six producer of associate degrees in nursing and a top 50 school for law enforcement and protective services related master's degrees in the nation by diverse issues. I will also say we also graduate the most nurses in the state of Georgia. All right. Yes, we do. <clears throat> Just last month, we welcomed over 2,100 prospective students and families and family members to the campus for our national open spring, our spring open house. The event provided a firsthand look at the benefits of being a Golden Ram, and I will tell you there was so much spirit and energy on this campus, it was unbelievable. We had to send people home, <clears throat> and hopefully they will be back this fall. We also held our third annual presidential bus tour where we connected with high school students in Dordery County and Terrell County and provided on-the-spot acceptances and on-site scholarships. So we actually accepted over 100 students and provided scholarship funds for those students as well. <clears throat> and if you have a student that is interested, Mr. Fleming will speak with you as well. Please bring him on. 
<clears throat> in the fall, ASU, ASU began, became the first uni university in the university system of Georgia and the only HBCU in the country to have nexus degrees in blockchain technology and machine learning. <clears throat> in January and February, I had the awesome opportunity to be in D.C. to actually speak with a lot of our national leaders as well as multiple HBCU presidents as we came together to talk about HBCUs and the support and the challenges that we have for HBCUs. The biggest thing we got out of that, though, is how we actually make sure we have sustainable universities for the future. <clears throat> Four ASU professors were selected to participate in an inaugural Chancellor's Learning Scholar Program by the University of Georgia. ASU had a $250 million impact on the Albany region in 2017, and that's according to the University System of Georgia. I happen to think it was about double that, but we'll go with their numbers. The Athletics Department received an honor this fall from the Mayor and Chairman of Dordery County Commissioner for the department's community service efforts in the city and county, and the student athletes earned over 1,900 hours of service this fall. <clears throat> Our students also participated in a full day of service right after homecoming or during homecoming, where they also performed well and worked very hard to help rebuild Albany and Daugherty County. We will continue to move forward even with even greater accomplishments recognizing that excellence is the standard. We celebrate our founding. We also celebrate our employees, nine of whom have committed 25 years of service to this institution. These employees have given a quarter of a century to the work of higher education. Now, I wasn't born when they started, but I'm gonna call out. <laughs> You're not supposed to laugh. Um, I'm gonna call those employees out and I'm gonna ask them to stand once I finish. Mr. Frederick Bell, from Laundry Services. <laughs> Mrs. Pearl Brown from Academic Success Unit. Ms. <laughs> Rosalind Levert, Facilities Management. <laughs> Ms. Evelyn Coney, Library Services. Okay. Mr. Albert Whitfield, Facilities Management. and Mr. Reginald Christian, University Marketing and Communications. Reggie, I'm surprised. <laughs> All right, can we please give a round of applause to these awesome employees? Thank you very much. I know this is a memorable occasion. I am so honored to be a part of the Albany State community, the Albany State family, and all of the things that we will be doing going forward. If not for us, then who? And we have to do this, and we are an awesome university. So thank you all for having us here. Thank you for being here for Founders Day, and I appreciate you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you, President Frederick. Immediately following the program, those present are 25 year recipients. If you'd please come to the stage and take a photo with President Frederick. Immediately following the program, thank you. So I don't know about you all, but I'm excited. You know, this is a celebration. When we come to these things, my, my cabinet members tell me to be on my best behavior. The president tells me to do the same thing. I certainly try, but sometimes I get ahead of myself. But today is a day for us to celebrate, is it not? Yeah. All right, so hope is built on nothing less than love and righteousness. We must love ASU and be righteous about our beliefs and do whatever we have to to ensure that not only does this institution survive, but thrive. Do good anyway, that's positive thinking. And if it is to be, it is up to me. I didn't know Dean Grant before I arrived at ASU, but when I knew he was going by his initial CW Grant, I knew he had to be fantastic. <laughs> it's, uh, so without further ado, we will now have the retiring of the colors by our ROTC program. Then we'll move into the singing of the alma mater from the entire audience under the leadership of Dr. Hood. 
And then we want you to join us certainly after the program directly. We will go to the grave site for the memorial service. Following that, those of you who have purchased tickets for the National Alumni Association luncheon, that will take place in the Student Center Ballroom here on the East Campus. At 5.30 today, we will have the naming of the Dr. Joseph W. Holly Fine Arts Center. <laughs> Immediately following that, we will have our alumni welcome reception. It's a good kickback, if you will, cookout style event that we'll have at Lovett Hall. We want you to join us there. And then on tomorrow night at 6.30 p.m., we will have our inaugural, watch this Mr. Highlight, sold out Blue and Gold Scholarship Gala. Thank you all for being here. Please join us for the gravesite ceremony and the other programs. Once again, 116 years of excellence being the standard, Albany State University. Without further ado, Dr. Hood.
Christian and drink it free. Drink it from the root of the tender tree. Thank you very much. If you're interested in hearing more of the ASU Concert Chorale and Chamber Singers, I invite you to our concert this coming up Tuesday evening, West Campus, 730. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Let us pray once again. Eternal and most gracious Father, we come before your holy and divine presence once again. We thank you for this glorious day, a brand new day fresh out of eternity. And you have allowed us to be witness of this precious gift. Bless us now as we go forth with the duty of giving tribute to our founder, breathe life into this message, into this audience. Give us your holy and sweet anointing. We ask this in the precious name of Jesus Christ, my Lord and my Savior, we pray. Amen. From the rising of the sun unto the going down 
of the same. The Lord's name is to be praised. And in many churches, and in particular the Baptist church, we like to say it this way. Bless the Lord from the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same. The Lord's name is worthy, worthy to be praised. To the Holly family, Madam President Marion Thedrick, faculty and staff, students, alumni, special guests and friends, the memorial statement. We come today, first I submit to you to give tribute and to express our gratitude for the founder, Dr. Joseph W. Hawley of Albany State College, now Albany State University, and two, to celebrate 116 years of visions and dreams, hopes and commitment, dedication and devotion that became realities and successes. A poet and noted well-known abolitionist, James Russell Lowell, in 1845, published a poem entitled, Verses Suggested by the Present Crisis. Verses suggested by the present crisis. I submit to you this morning that this poem includes the following lines that speaks about the struggle, the conflict, the challenges, the combat of being a representative of truth, of being an agent of the light, of being a change agent when we come to making great decisions and life choices. The poem includes the following lines. Once to every man and nation comes the moment to decide in the strife, in the struggle of truth and falsehood for the good or for the evil side. Some great cause, some new direction, some new decision, offering each bloom or blight. And the choice goes by forever, twits between that darkness and that light. Dr. Joseph Hawley, our esteemed founder, educator, and visionary leader, honored the truth at all costs. That is to say, he answered his clarion call, for he knew that service to humanity is service to God. Therefore, he made the choice to travel uncharted, unknown, unfamiliar territories. By this, he made the choice to speak truth to opposition, to speak progress to the lives of others, and to speak light in dark places where there was no opportunity, to speak light to those places of disappointment and despair. Dr. Holly made a sacred choice, never losing sight of his purpose and his mission in his life, regardless of the odds and regardless of the foes that came against him. By this, as I close, God planted a seed into the heart and the soul of Dr. Holly. God's seed fell on fertile and good soil. 
God was the source, the sustainer, and the supplier of the seed. In turn, Dr. Holly planted the seed that God planted in him. Dr. Holly was the sower of God's seed. He was God's chosen vessel. Chosen to plant, to cultivate, and to nurture the seeds of light and truth. The blessed gift of opportunity. And to these sacred grounds, he made the utmost choice. So in closing, let us never lose sight of Dr. Holly's purpose. Let us never lose sight of Dr. Holly's legacy. Let us n never lose sight of Dr. Holly's mission. Ram Nation. I say again, Ram Nation. We are the beneficiaries of Dr. Holly's sacrifice. We are the recipients of his courage. We are the gatekeepers of his legacy. We are the stewards of this vineyard, all Benny State University. Don't waste the seed. Receive it, keep it, protect it, preserve it. This is the seed that Dr. Holly gave unto us. Don't waste the seed. Therefore, we come here today on this momentous occasion and on these hollowed, these hollowed grounds, this place of sacred trust, this vineyard, if you will, the Albany State University, to celebrate the source, the seed, and the soil. Don't waste the seed. God bless you and God keep you. Don't waste the seed. Thank you. This concludes the ceremony. <laughs>